So let's go to Matthew 12. Chapter 12, and we're going to go to verse 37. So let me get to the, there's chapter 12 right here. And we need verse 37. Where's verse 37 at? 33, 38, 37. For by your words you will be justified, and your words, and by your words you will be condemned. So, not only does it hurt other people, will it hurt or cause death to you know someone's situation, life or death to any situation that someone's going through to others, but it'll hurt you as well. Because at the end of time, Chris, every man and woman will be judged for every careless word they said and did, whether it's good or bad. So like I said, guys, you got to be careful because God is going to judge you by everything you said and everything you did. And if you and if you had spoken something to somebody else that was not right and that you did something wrong, but you did not or forgot to repent of it, that's going to instantly cause you to send you to hell as well. So every man and every woman will be judged for every careless word whether good or bad, they spoke to another person. And if it was bad, we spoke. If the words that we spoke were found bad and negative words we spoke will cause us to be condemned. But see, if you repent of that and you say to God that you're sorry for it, that's different. Then you're not going to be condemned for what you said. Then you'll be forgiven from the blood for, through the blood of Christ. But see, there are times when people out there ask or people out there are mad at somebody and can't forgive somebody. And I was one of those people for the longest time. I couldn't forgive my dad for several things that he's done. Not only for several things that he's done, but for the fact that he ended up leaving this world and leaving me, my mother, my sister alone and leaving us. And take it as, as, as my answer to cop out and not have him to deal with the, the problems that he had, that he, uh, that he caused. Like when he beat my mom black and blue before he passed away. And the fact that every time I went to bed, instead of trying to treat me with medication or try to, uh, you know, encourage me not to, he would sit me on a staircase in my wet clothes and he would tell me every time my friends came over, oh, Andrew can't come out because he went to bed. He thought that tormenting me and uh what's the word i'm looking for tormenting and not criticizing but mocking me in front of all my friends would cause me to uh to stop wet in the bed which never worked i was on tofernal medication for quite a long while because of that reason but i thought that since he you know committed that stuff committed suicide or whatnots and shot himself that he took the cop out way and I was so mad I couldn't forgive him. But I recently went through some deliverance and I actually now forgive him. Don't get me wrong. I would, if he was still alive, would not want him back in my life no matter what. And just because you forgive somebody, like I say, Chris, doesn't mean you have to let him back into your life. You can forgive them and still not want nothing to do with them. But you can honestly forgive them in Jesus and say, look, I forgive you for what you did, but I don't want you back in my life. Because, quite frankly, if if they did it before and they haven't repented of it, then they're going to do it again. And you don't want that to cause any more strife in your life. But if we do not repent of it, and like I said, some people have unforgiveness of other people, and that alone, the Bible says, will cause us to what? Not enter into the kingdom because of the unforgiveness. It says, even a little unforgiveness in your heart, you will not enter into the kingdom. So... We, as every man and woman, would be judged for every careless word that we spoke to another person, whether good or bad. We would be judged for it. And if the words we spoke are found bad, and the negative words we spoke will cause us to be condemned if we do not repent of it forever. So, in conclusion, the words we speak are very powerful and can do real damage to other people. Or it can also cause 
good things to happen. And the the second uh, part to this, which will be part two, will be the good side of the tongue and the good side of speaking into th- speaking things and the good side of the powerful words. But like I'm trying to say, Chris, and you can jump in at any time that you want to, but words are very powerful. Words can, as one of the greatest, well, I'm not going to call her the greatest, but uh, one great singer used to say, words can stir up love affairs and, you know, cause, you know, all kinds of havoc. But words can cause all kinds of things to happen. And they can do good things, too, like... Um, oh, yeah. God, I'm giving I lost. Time. I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought. I had it. <laughs> but words can do good things as well, as Chris was saying. Like you know, words can. They like, can change your life. Right. Like if I said to if I said to you, Chris, I said, Chris, you know what? In Jesus, I love you. Now that would that would definitely make someone's day, would it not? Yes. It's like here's the perfect example. I give this as as the example every time I talk about something like this. But my buddy Dan. Uh, Chris doesn't know Dan, but Dan was a prophet back in the day when he was alive. One of the greatest men of God that I know. Don't get me wrong. And I one day will get old and senile too. But he got old, senile, and crabby at times. And that's just the way everyone's going. Here's the way it works. Everyone's born, know nothing. They learn everything. And then they go back to knowing absolute nothing and they go to be with God as long as they know who God is. How come they can't start knowing nothing as being old, get young, and then go be with God? Because the Bible does say we'll be 35, so we're going to decrease in age when we get to heaven. It says we'll be like God, and God died, I think, at the age of 35, or is it 33? Something like 33, that. 33. 33. Yeah, see, Chris knows who he's talking about. Sometimes I forget things, but 33. We'll be 33. But with that being said. Beautiful yeah, age. Oh, I know. But like like I'm saying, and and then I just lost my train of thought too. Devil, you back off in Jesus' name. But Dan was one of the greatest prophets that I ever known, and he was one of the greatest men of God. And he, but I just lost my train of thought. So, but oh, this is what I was going to say. Dan at one point was at church, and I give this as an example all the time. I mean, God said to him, He says, "See the woman over there?" He goes, "Yeah." He goes, "Yeah, guys here." He goes, go over there and tell her that Jesus loves her. But God, she already knows that. He goes, yeah, I know she knows that, but go tell her that Jesus loves her, that God loves her. He goes, God, she already knows. And he really was getting really furious with God. He said, God, she already knows that. He was getting heated up, and he he was going to tell God off one. And finally, he got he he went, he said, finally, he said, fine, I'll go over there and tell her. I'll go show you one, basically. So he walked over there, and, he's, and he looked at her, and he goes, Jesus said that he loves you. And she grabbed him, and she started sobbing on his shoulder, and, she, and he, his face just like dropped, his, his jaw dropped to the floor. And she goes, you know what? If someone, I told God today, if someone didn't come up and tell me that Jesus loved me, I was going to commit suicide. So see, just the fact that you, he said that Jesus loved her, caused her to have great joy in her now because of the of the confirmation from God of the positive affirmations, the positive words that Dan spoke onto her from God caused her to cut that tongue caused the emo, uh, caused her good emotions instead of negative ones. And like it said, like Chris said, that you can speak good into people's lives and you can create good things to happen. And that's just a great example of it, too, as well, because when you say something like that to somebody, you never know what people are going through, Chris. Every day, you never know what they're going through. It's like I, I told a lady that I used to work with, uh, I forgot her, Judy, and she was one of the greatest ladies, one of my best friends, too. Christian, everything, with church. Loved God, and we talked about God all the time. But she... She got mad one day because a couple came in and started doing laundry. She said they can start doing laundry, even though it was the last minute. And then they walked out, came back in with more laundry, and started putting more in. So by that time, she's like, we got to close sooner, getting mad, blah, blah, blah. 
I said, look, I'm going outside for a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to tell my wife that I'm with you for a minute. We got a couple doing laundry and then I'll be back in a second. I walked outside, I said, hun, I said, I'm going to stay here with Judy for just a brief more minute. Just turn the car off for a minute. We got a couple here that it's finishing up their laundry. They just came in. They just came in and she let them do some laundry. So I'm going to wait for, you know, another 15, 20 minutes. They only need to wash their laundry, they said. So we're just going to let them wash their laundry. And then after that, we, we can leave. And so I came back in and Judy was standing there. She's getting mad. I said, Judy, just let it go. You never know what somebody's going through. Just like I said to you a minute ago, they came up after putting the laundry and they go, we thank you so very much. We just got here to Michigan. We didn't know anything about where we're at. We didn't know what's going on. We just saw a laundromat and know we had to dri- we had to wash our clothes. We have a dryer where we're staying at. We just don't want, don't have a washing machine. They said, so we just need to wash our clothes. And they go, just for you guys being nice, here's $20 each. Judy goes, I can't accept it. I said, Judy, I said, thank you guys. And we appreciate you guys. I, and then as they left and I spoke to her, I said, Judy, I said, number one, see, I told you, you never know what they're going through. I said, number two, when God blesses you with something after you do something for God, don't ever say no to it. Accept it because God's blessing you. Now, if you don't truly want to accept it, even though God gave it to you, then you can give it back to God. Take it in the church on Sunday and give it into the offering plate. And that's exactly what she did. So she gave it back now, to God when God gave it to her. Go ahead. Now, I, I, I just wanted to say I remember the time that you brought that penguin to me and you said that God told you to give it to me and uh, some other electronic stuff. And I said, including the phone, the cell phone, which I ended up taking after all. I, I took everything after all, um, even though at first I was like, no, God couldn't be giving me this. Why would he want to do that? Um, but as after I talked to Andrew here enough, I said, okay, I'll try it. Um, maybe I'll give it back to you later. But I ended up using that cell phone and needing that cell phone. Um, I can't say exactly why, but I needed uh, the video game machine was what the Penguin was. It had the game Super Mario Brothers, and I love Super Mario Brothers. So it was giving me something to do um, while I was at this uh, halfway house uh, by force. Um, And it was also helping me like the phone, which I didn't want to take. I didn't want to take his cartridge because it was rare. It was an Atari cartridge, but I have it. Um... He told me that God wanted you to have all this. And I said, you can't be serious. And after I talked to him enough, I said, okay, I'll try it. Because other people started saying they're going to take this stuff. And I thought to myself, no, this is what God is giving me. After reasoning in my head, I said, if this is what God is giving me through Andrew, I'm going to take it. And like I said before, when Dan was obedient and when I was obedient to God as well by giving these things to you, that's what being obedient does. It, it, it causes joy in someone else's life. It's, you know, like I always say, one man's trash is another man's treasure. But when you're obedient to God, that's when it causes or brings joy to somebody else's life because now you being obedient is giving or doing something positive to somebody else in their life. And just like Dan, he spoke a word to that woman and that word and that word caused her to have joy. Just in the fact that I was obedient to God and gave to Chris and Chris was and gave Chris some and gave Chris joy because I was being obedient. And that just goes to show that number one, God out there still loves you no matter what. Now, it doesn't mean that God loves you and you can sin, sin, sin all day long. You, you know, you play church on Sunday and you, oh, holy is the Lord and we love you, we honor you and glorify you. And then every 
other day of the week, Monday through Saturday, you're living like hell.